Are you worried your family history research might be lost to future generations? Is it currently sitting on your computer or hard drive? Maybe it's in file folders that no one wants. We are Lynn and Danette. We're cousins, we're family historians, we're a writer and an artist. And we've joined forces to create Heirloom, pre-made templates that take all the work out of building your family history book. We help fulfill your family history book dreams. Join us every Tuesday for conversations and questions with Lynn and Danette, helping you build your legacy for future generations. Our page is your story. Hello everyone, and welcome to Conversations and Questions with Lynn and Danette. My name is Lynn Palermo, and I'm the founder of the Family History Writing Studio. And I'm here today with episode three. And today we are going to take a look at photographs and how to bring photographs into your family history book. We're going to head over into Canva. That's where Danette is right now. She's waiting for us over there. And she's going to show us how to upload our photographs into our family history book, how to make them look pretty on the page, how to use all those Canva features in order to really bring those pictures to life in your family history book. So we're gonna head over to learn some tips and tools on bringing photographs into your family history book. I'll see you over there. Good morning. Today I'm gonna to show you how to deal with your photographs within the heirloom templates on Canva. But a lot of the advice I'm gonna give will pertain to anywhere you're gonna make your book, whether you use our templates or not. So let's get started. First of all, where do we get our photographs from? If you go all the way to the left and click where it says uploads, it's the third one down, and then onto the blue strip that says upload media. When you do that, it will take you to your computer and then you go to wherever you keep your photos. Here's mine right here. I pick the one I want to upload into Canva. Click open and it will import it right onto the side where I'm, I'll need it in order to bring it over into my book. So when you're looking at the templates online before you purchase them, they'll look just like this all fixed up with photos all the way already in the slots. I mean, sorry, I have a little bit of a cold, so I'm getting out of breath <laughs> quickly. Anyway, so, but once you purchase the templates and upload them to your computer and Canva, they'll look like this. The photos have been removed in order to make room for your photos. And where are your photos? They're right over here where you imported them. So all I have to do is click on one of them and there it is. And then I just pop it right into wherever I want it to be. There you go. Uh, let's take this little boy right here, click on him and then pop them right at where I want them to be. I can fiddle around with them a little bit if I want them to be up or down. All I did was double click on them and that allowed me to manipulate the photo a little bit. There you go. What if you say, oh, I accidentally put the wrong photo in here. You go back over here, grab the correct photo, and just put it right over top of them. That's all you have to do. Very simple. What if you want to add another photo in here? More than likely, you'll want it to match these two. So I grab the entire thing, move it over, grab this one over here, move it over. And the reason I grabbed everything is and I don't have to mess with moving the dates and the flowers and everything. Because what I'm going to do is grab this whole one right here and duplicate it right up here on the top right hand corner is a duplicate button. Now I got two of this girl. I put her in the middle or wherever you want her to be. 
I would probably put it right here just to make it a little more interesting to look at. And then I'll go over here and I will, let's see, I already got her, I already got her. Oh, not that it matters. I'll get this man right here. And we pop him right in. Doesn't quite fit. Double click. I'll make him a little bigger so that his head is as big as the other people in, on the page, just for eye appeal. There we go. And that's it's as simple as that. Of course, you would want to change the date. If you don't know how to do that, we'll learn that in the next video about text. On to the next page. Now, everything I just taught you or told you also pertains to documents. These are newspaper clippings. Here's a death certificate. They're treated the exact same way because they're usually photo files. <coughs> and if you have everything on your home computer organized, you should be able to find everything very quickly when you hit upload media. Now I pulled in this one to show you that you want everything on your page to be equal, or how do I put it, to be pleasing to the eye. And if these pictures were all different sizes and all willy nilly, they wouldn't look very good. Also, if you'll have noticed, when you find old photographs, some are in black and white, some are in sepia, some may even be in color, some are yellowed with age or torn. But when you put them all on one page, you kind of want them to be in the same color family. So in order to achieve that, what I do is I bring my picture in then I hit edit image. And I go over here where it says filters and click see all so that I can see all the different filters. And then I start clicking to see what effect each one has on the photos until I get all the photos in the same color palette. See, if I left them like this, that's not very appealing to the eye, is it? But if I cannot get them to match, they don't have to be perfect, but you want them to be similar at least. But if I can't achieve that just because the photos are so old or whatever, I make them all black and white. Oops. That's all you have to do there. Then if you'll notice, I made this text box the same way. Little story about the brothers, but it wasn't quite enough to fill up the box. And it would have looked kind of funny like that. So I just threw in a quote, fills up space. I found a quote about brothers, of course. So it was relevant, you know, just throw any old thing on the page. And then I decided I wanted just a little embellishment. So I went over here where it says photos. And these are photos that Canva gives you, not, not ones that you brought in. And right up here in the search bar, I typed pocket watch. And it gave me a whole bunch of choices and I pulled over the one I wanted. Same with these little embellishments. You usually find them either in elements or photos. Go to the next one. Now, talk about looking like I threw pic pictures on here willy nilly. But what I was trying to achieve was, I thought it would be cool to have all my ancestors on the same page and together, even though they're from different time periods. I don't know, sometimes I have weird ideas and I just liked that idea. But what I did to achieve that was, let me go back over here to my uploads where my photographs are and I will, um, who do I wanna pull over? That will fit, oh, let's bring this gentleman over right here. But obviously he's not looking the same in any way, shape or form. So what I did to get all these people looking like this is, again, I went to edit image, but I went to the background remover 
and that will remove everything except the, the gentleman himself. There you go. Now I need to make him fit size-wise, of course. And I think I'll put him, oh, he's still a little big, but I'll put him back here with these people. Well, he's looking a little weird because he's only a half a person. So I come up here to positions, upper right-hand corner, and I click backwards until he's behind everybody. Now I adjust him down a little bit, whoops. All right, I don't want all, move over there, lady. I'll move him down here. I'll move her back. And now he looks like he fits, he doesn't stick out. Let me move this guy over just a little bit to cover up, whoops. Nope, that's a half a man too. I have too many half people in here. But I just kept arranging everything until everyone looked right. Nobody looked like they had half a body, even though most of these people do. And that's all I had to do. And then I wrote a little something about family right here. <coughs> Excuse me. To the next picture. Kind of the same idea. I brought all these pictures over. They look like they're random, but they're not. I put them in place where I wanted them so that it kind of all looked right. It all goes together, it works. And the reason it works is I made them all black and white. They're all the same theme. They're all military people, different wars, different eras, different countries. I put the little stars here. I even threw in a few documents uh, as a draft notice. Um, one of the relatives drafts notices is a love letter. Here's a medal. Someone won and some other kind of military papers. But I brought all these people over and I even put things like KIA, killed in action. I have a missing in action in here somewhere. Um, and I put them, of course, on the relevant person. And then I made them all this, everything in the same color palette. So it looks nice, or at least looks nice to me. Now I'm gonna show you a cool trick. See how there's a little metal back here? In order for that to work, I had to make this metal pale. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to read the writing. I did that by using this little transparency button. So the metal actually looked like this. It's just a picture. And I removed the background from it, so I only saw the metal. And then I can make it as light or as dark as I want. It just gave a cool effect behind the script like that. And I could also do that same thing to this uh, background. If I had a lot of writing or a lot of other things to put on that background, I might want it more transparent. Right now, it's pretty dark. One other thing I wanted to show you, that I meant to show you on the first page, when I want to bring in another picture, I need another placeholder unless I duplicate this one. But if I don't want to duplicate this one, because say I want it to be in a different shape, I come over here to elements, again, on your left hand side. And then I scroll down until I find the frames. These are the uh, photo holders. And there's probably about two or 300 of them. There's so many, every shape and style you could think of. But most of them get a little crazy, which is okay if you're, I don't know, making a greeting card or something. But for a family history book, you want to stay fairly conservative. So say instead of a square one, I want a round frame. Just come over here. I clicked on it. It came popped over. I can make it as large or small as I want to. I can put it in front of this gentleman or I can put it behind him. 
And then I just go find a photo in my uploads and I pop it over and fit them right in there. And that's all I have to do. All right, one more really cool thing I wanna show you. Well, it's not just cool, but it's also informational is if you go to myheritage.com, and a lot of you probably already have a subscription there, but even if you don't, they will allow you to use their photo editor and it will restore pictures. See how this picture is pretty blurry? This is Lynn and I's great grandmother and she only lived into her 30s, so there aren't a whole lot of photos of her. I found this photograph in a book, so it really wasn't even a photograph. It was a printed picture in a book. I ran it through my scanner and well, it's okay until I found my heritage photo repair thingy. I don't know what you call it, app, I guess. Now look at her, how clear she is. This is the best invention in the world, man. I love this thing. Now you can really get an idea of what she looks like. It will even colorize the picture if you want it to. Now the app's not perfect. And if your picture is too badly damaged, it'll only do a so-so job. And if your picture's really old, then the colorization tends to be sepia. Um, but I thought it did a very nice job on this photograph, which is, I don't know, maybe from the 30s. Anyway, uh, Ancestry also has a photo repair now. It's still in beta form, but you have to be a member to use it. My Heritage will let you use it several times before they will then encourage you to become a member. <laughs> I happen to be a member, so I'm lucky that way, I guess. Well, I hope I taught you something. If I did not, just email me or Lynn. Either of us will be glad to help you. And I guess I will see you next week when we will talk about dealing with your text, your story, and how to put it into your template. Until then, have a good one. Welcome back everyone. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you, Danette. Lots of tips and tools today on photographs. Thank you for joining us. Please subscribe. Give us some like and love below, please. And by all means, make sure you join us next week because next week we're going to be talking about text, how to bring your stories into those pages how to format it, how to make it look pretty on the page, right? We want everything to look just fantastic. So we're going to go through all these various elements as we move forward with our episodes. If you have any questions or comments, anything that you'd like us to cover in upcoming videos, please put them in the comments below, send us an email, we're happy to hear from you. Otherwise, we'll see you back here next week for another edition of Conversations and Questions with Lynn and Danette.